everybody. I just want to give you this presentation to help you with uh, some of the early American portions of your study. So uh, one of the main things that uh, I want to share with you today and really what I want to focus on is Mesoamerica. So what does that look like? Who lived in Mesoamerica? What years was it? And what were some of the types of cultures that flourished? So Mesoamerica or Middle America extends from Northern Mexico down through Central America. It includes the territories which now make up Guatemala, Honduras, Belize, and El Salvador. Most of Mesoamerica falls in the tropical part of the equator. Hunter-gatherers were the first to arrive in the Americas. Mesoamerica has a tropical highland climate, lush vegetation, seasonal temperatures, and precipitation. And I want to make sure that I do give credit where credit is due. This was made by another, um, another teacher. And that information I'll put in the comments so that if you want to research some more information um, on this or find some other presentations um, to be created, this is something that's a great opportunity. Okay. Okay, so where did the civilizations flourish? And if you look at the map, Mesoamerica went from Mexico all the way down to Latin America and then part of South America. We're going to break down what those popular um, or most uh, popular, you would see, reading um, in your history books, uh, civilizations. But just know that there are many, many, many other smaller Native American groups as well throughout the Americas. So varying landforms made up Mesoamerica, such as coastal plains, volcanoes, highlands, and mountains. Hot and humid climates provided a variety of different plants. Fertile soil was ideal for growing crops and farming. Jade, obsidian, and we're going to talk more about this, and actual shark teeth are four natural resources found in Mesoamerica. So, and this is a great opportunity for you to take some notes um, when we're talking about different, this is saying power words, vocabulary words is another uh, way of describing these. So what's obsidian? A volcanic, a volcanic glass similar in, uh, in composition to granite, natural resource that can be found in Mesoamerica. Jade, a green material, highly esteemed as ornamental stone for carvings, jewelry, etc. Cacao, tropical American evergreen tree cultivated for its seeds, the source of cocoa, chocolate, and etc. And then slash and burn architecture, the process of cutting down trees, setting fire to the remaining foliage, and using but let me back up here and basically using the ashes to then replant and grow better crops. So here's some additional ones. Maize, type of corn grown in Mesoamerican Native American civilizations. When the Spanish colonized, they loved corn. And we're going to talk more about that in another lesson. Uh, mother culture is another power word, a term for an earlier ancient people's culture that has great and widespread influence in some later cultures and people. Mesoamerica, a region that includes the southern part of Mexico and much of Central America, and Codex, book or pages held together by early Mesoamerican civilizations to record historical events and important dates and people. So what I want y'all to know is that even in Mesoamerica, they were civilized. They had a written language. They had a hierarchy. So don't just think because, oh, well, that was so long ago that that wasn't, um, that they weren't important and that they didn't have 
um, technology and written languages and things like that. So we'll get we'll get a little more details in a minute. Okay, tribute, a payment made by one country to another is a sign of respect. Causeway, a raised road or path is across low or wet ground. So we might think of it, you know, a causeway, a bridge. So they had those. A tribute, let me go back here. You may have heard it. Taxes, right? We would say taxes. Aqueduct, you may, re you may be connecting that with ancient Romans. Um, and what they did, well, an aqueduct is a, stru a structure designed to bring fresh water into a city or town. So they had a fresh water system. And Chinapa, floating garden, small stationary artificial island built on a lake for agricultural purposes. And we'll get a little more specific in just a minute. Okay, some more power words, conquistadors. One of the Spanish conquerors of Mexico and Peru in the 16th century. And if I'm saying 16th century, remember we're talking about 1500 to 1599. So anytime you hear 18th century, go down that um, the next 100 years. So 17th century, we're talking about 1600 to 1699. 18th century, 1700 to 1799. Okay. Calculi, a clan or ward constituting the fundamental unit of Aztec society, and kipu, a device made of a main cord with smaller different color cords attached and not in use for calculating, okay? So they had a mathematical system. Quechua, a family of languages spoken by peoples of Peru, Bolivia, Ecuador, Chile, and Argentina. Chosky, the messengers or runners of the Inca Empire, kind of like the mail carriers, right? They had to be in good shape to send messages back and forth. And Stella, an upright stone slab or column, typically bearing a commemorative inscription or relief, often serving as a commemorative gravestone as well. So here's some Mesoamerica timelines. And when I'm referring to BC, um, <clears throat> it's, it's um, you may have heard it as before Christ. You may also see it BCE, before Common Era. But so if you think of a timeline and zero um, being, you know, where we think modern day AD starts, right? BC is in the negatives. It's before we get there. So if we're saying 1200 BC, that's negative 1200. Well, so it's not just 1200 years ago. It's the 2023 plus whatever 1200. That's how many years ago it was. So think of it along the lines of the timeline. So 1200s BC, the Olmec civilization begins in 1150 BC. The city of San Lorenzo is built by the Olmec civilization. And 400 BC, the Olmec civilization disappears. I just want to say that the Olmecs did not name this city San Lorenzo because that was a Spanish term and that came later. But just know that that is where present day it was built, San Lorenzo, during this time. Okay, so 250 AD. Okay, so this is present day, so we're in the positives. The classical Maya per period begins, okay? 900 AD, uh, the classical Maya period ends. So it's during this time that really they were at the height of their power. And 1200 AD, uh, the Cusco Valley is established by the Incas. Okay, in 1325, now we're seeing in history where the Aztecs begin to really be at the height of their power. They built Tenochtitlan. Okay. And that Tenochtitlan is present day Mexico City. So the Spanish conquest, Cortez, conquistador, defeats the Aztecs. And in 1532, the Spanish defeat the Incas. Okay, so what were they growing? They had to eat, right? 
as we were talking about before, slash and burn arc, uh, agriculture. It was just a technique technique used by the people in Mesoamerica, specifically the Maya. Trees were cut down in an area where they would plant. They would burn the trees in the ash, and that would fertile the soil, fertilize the soil. Okay, cacao. Um, cacao are a type of tree that produces bean-like seeds from which cocoa and chocolate is made from, which many of us are addicted to. And then maize. Maize was a type of corn that was a staple food in Mesoamerica. Um, they even built temples for this. So this was very, very, very important in Mesoamerica. Now here on this presentation where the Olmec 1280 should be BC, so in that negative, so please notate that that should say BC right there. So the Olmec civilization was the first, the mother, first real civilization of Mesoamerica. So they resided in the southern region of Mexico, so along the Gulf Coast, which was very wet climate with a large rainforest. Their soil was very fertile. Farming land thrived in this region. The large basalt stone heads are a distinctive feature of the Olmec civilization. Uh, why they were built still is still a mystery in today's society. So, there we go. so this is one of those wonders of the world still. They also came up with the ball game. Um, the goal of the ball game is to get the ball through a hoop on the opposite side of the court without using hands or feet. There are two opposing uh, teams and players can use hips and, and thighs to bounce the ball from the walls. Okay. Sound familiar to some of our sports? Okay, so also the Olmec people were mostly farmers, fishermen, and artisans. Their mud buildings and villages were located by the rivers. The elite class, priests and nobles, lived in large stone houses, so they had a class system. So I want you to think, as you're going through this presentation, these are not just primitive beings. Um, you know, we're not talking about Neanderthal, ne Neanderthalic period. Um, this is the first civilizations that we're seeing in the Americas. So they worship multiple gods and deities with their chief god having a jaguar face and a human body. Their ceremonies and ceremonial centers were later adopted by other civilizations in the area. The Olmecs also used a calendar that influenced later society. The calendars were not only used to keep the time, but used for religious observations. Okay, they grew maize, squash, beans, sweet potatoes, and tomatoes. Some traditions that came from the Olmec include the ball game, maize cultivating, keeping a calendar, religion and human sacrifice, and building ceremonial centers. So minus the human sacrifice section, just some of these things I want you to think about. Um, they're very similar to modern day society. So keep that in mind. Okay, the Mayas. The Mayas were very strongly influenced by the Olmec people. Their highlands were located in Southern Guatemala. Their lowlands were located in Northern Guatemala. Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula. The ancient ruins such as Chichen Itza, so if you've traveled to Mexico, maybe you've seen these. If not, I would encourage you one day to do this. And the Yucatan Peninsula, Peninsula can still be visited today. The Maya had social hierarchy, again, signs of a civilized society that they lived by. It consisted of the ruling class, the nobility, commoners, and slaves. Kings and nobles had all their needs met by the commoners and slaves. Sound familiar? Um, and they wore animal skins, feather headdresses, and elaborate jewelry. Slaves were often captured in war and were sacrificed to the gods. So let's talk about Mayan glyphs. You may have heard of uh, hieroglyphs from Egypt or in Mesopotamia, the Sumerian script, or um, in the Chinese the Oracle Bone script. So what all these are are written forms of languages, one of the first written forms of languages. So when you're comparing these, 
know that the Mayans were right there along with these other powerful civilizations with those written languages. Okay. Uh, a Mayan book was called a codex. The books had written information about gods, leaders, ceremonies, and daily life. So Palenque City, about Palenque City, a temple was built in the honor of King Pakal, located between the Maya highlands and lowlands, large plazas for public gatherings. They had canals that provided fresh water throughout the city flat terraces for farming and ball court for ball game. So they had a water system, they had games, they farmed much like we have today in our current societies. Again, the codex book kept records. And then you may have heard the Mayan calendar and how complex it was. So it was highly complex calendar that was also used by other Mesoamerican civilizations. And at a 52 year calendar round, um, they tracked the movements of the planet. And then obviously doomsday, doomsday did not occur in 2012, but that's when the Mayan calendar ended. And many people thought that that could have happened and we're very thankful that the world didn't end then. Okay. So Aztecs, 1100 to 1522, they were low, this is the height of their power. The Aztecs were located in central Mexico. Their capital was Tenochtitlan, which is present day Mexico City, with a large population of over 250,000 people. That's who just lived in Tenochtitlan. Okay, the Aztec grew and sold different types of corn. Again, back to that staple. Okay, they even built floating gardens by weaving sticks together and so chinapas together to create a giant raft. They piled mud from the bottom of the lake to the top of the raft to create three feet of soil to grow. They grew onions, peppers, avocados, and tomatoes. They used cacao be uh, beans as money, so they would trade with, with beans. The Aztec Empire was destroyed in 1521 because of the Spanish conquistador uh, Cortez and his people. We're going to talk more about him in just a little bit. Okay, so causeways, as we mentioned before, okay, bridges, chinapas, floating gardens, stone aqueducts, how to get water going around, and um, the macuado which was there a wooden sword with an obsidian blade at the end. Okay, so what do the, uh, what is the social class in Aztec society? Okay, so they had a king like many countries did and do today, nobles, priests, warriors, merchants and artisans and farmers and slaves. And that's just kind of like their caste system based on who was at the top, the kings and the bottom were farmers and slaves. Feel free to stop this presentation and look at this a little more if, if you'd like to. Okay, so the decline. It's even though they had their own weapons, they just could not compete with the Spanish cannons and armor and they'd never seen a horse before so they were terrified of horses so you can imagine a spaniard with armor on a horse and cannons going off this would just terrify even the mighty aztecs okay the aztecs one of their characteristics of their society was that if they came to your village and they'd say hey you either pay tribute and follow us or we're going to kill everybody right here so most did right most did not want to fight the aztecs so they became up under the umbrella uh, kind of like how rome was conquering the world as well um but when the spanish came that saying the enemy of my enemy is my friend really plays into this so aztec enemies possibly people that they had wronged or were, were forcing to pay tribute to them uh, they began to help the Spanish. Also, another reason why the Aztecs declined, smallpox and other diseases swept through the Aztec population. So the Europeans, the Spanish were bringing these over 
and they just couldn't keep up with um, their, their health. You know, they were really dying of diseases. And then the last thing is geography. The Spanish blocked the causeways and bridges to and from the city. This cut their drinking water off from supply, and they died from starvation. Okay. The Incas. The Inca Empire were located in South America. And then in my next video, I'm going to show you a map of South America and um, where a little closer look on where every all, all these cultures were located. Their capital Cusco was in a mountain valley in southern Peru. And the Incas were far, highly skilled farmers who created canals to irrigate their crops. Does that sound familiar with other Mesoamerican cultures? Absolutely. Civilizations. They were also skilled in jewelry and making other crafts. They invented kipu, which was their way to record information by using colored and knotted strings. Chaskis, they were runners that carried messages throughout the communities and over 12 million people were under the Incan empire. 12 million, that is just, um, that is unheard of but that's how many in this time were under the Incan Empire, okay? Well, they also had to have mailmen and women, right? So whoever it was, they had to be physically fit so they could get back and forth delivering messages. Okay, we talked about Kipu, a mathematical counting tool. It helped keep track, trade, population distribution, medical advances. They were even doing brain surgery, blood transfusion, and used local plants for medical purposes. And religion was based on agriculture. The Inti, god of the sun, was the most important god, basis of life. The Inca rarely practiced human sacrifice, was different from other Mesoamerican civilizations such as the Mayans and Aztecs. Okay, so the Incan army was the most powerful army in the Andes. They used hand-to-hand -hand combat, clubs, slings, battle axes, and lances made of stone, copper, and bronze. The Inca army would invite neighboring areas to join the empire. The neighbors would agree out of fear of becoming attacked. This is how the army and empire grew so large, okay? So the Incas had nearly 200,000 soldiers, and they all had extensive military training. So I want to keep referring back to the statement of these civilizations were advanced, okay? They're not someone that, you know, we, we may think of, oh, man, you know, the Spanish were just so much more advanced than them. No, really what in the previous slide we talked about was why these civilizations uh, eventually were conquered, but it does not need to take away with how great and educated and intelligent they were as well. Okay, so who conquered the, the Incas? Well, we know that Cortes conquered the Aztecs. Francisco Pizarro led an expedition that ended the Inca Empire. He actually took the Incan leader as a prisoner and executed him. So after their leader died, the empire pretty much fell apart. The Spanish armor, helmets, horses, and swords gave them advantage too great for the Incas to overcome. All right, with that being said, um, here is, uh, if you would like to go and get some inf more information or see more from this professional as well, um, please go and, and take a look at their website.